Here's a story from Grandpa for my three favorite little girls, Emma, Ayla, and Audrey. It's November and Halloween is over, but I have one last Halloween type book. I didn't read it in October because it really wasn't very scary. The story is about a witch's cat who gets into trouble for trying to make soup from a spell book. It isn't scary because the young pretty witch seems to be pretty nice, except for when her cat turns her into a frog. Here it is, The Witch's Cat and the Cooking Catastrophe. Written by Kirsty Watson and illustrated by Magdalena Sacco. One day a witch's cat found a dusty old cookbook and it gave him the most marvelous idea. Now, if you look on these books, neither of them are cookbooks. They're both books of spells. I know, said the cat excitedly. I'll make a super scrumptious surprise lunch for my lovely witch. How hard can it possibly be? And as he eagerly flicked through the pages, he found the perfect recipe called Witch's Broth. Five fish heads, four splodges of frog spawn, three dried lily blossoms, two drops of dragonfly tears, one pinch of magic witching dust, directions, throw it all in, stir, and leave it for one minute. Excellent, said the cat. She's a witch, and I'm sure she'll like broth, whatever that is. Then he roughly followed the directions, adding an extra sprinkling of magic witching dust for good measure. Ha! I'm rather excellent at this cooking thing, he was boasting to himself, when poof! It was ready. The mixture was green and gurgling. The cat took a big sniff. Hmm, delicious, but it needs just a little something else. And he knew just the thing. Seasoning. So he added some herbs and spices before finishing it off to perfection with a good shake of salt and pepper. There, much better, he said, feeling very pleased with himself. Just then, the lovely witch arrived home. Oh, cat, you made lunch. What a wonderful surprise, she said happily. Well, this is interesting, said the witch as she took a closer peek at the mixture, which was now making a funny fizzing sound. What's in it? No, wait, don't tell me. Let me taste it and guess. And with that, she took a big spoonful. She swirled it around her mouth. Then she swallowed it with a loud gulp and zap. In a flash of light, she turned into a frog. Ribbit, ribbit, said the frog. Oh, no, shrieked the cat. That wasn't supposed to happen. And that's when he noticed an important scribble at the bottom of the page. Warning, adding seasoning to a magic potion will make it stronger. So use sparingly, or ideally not at all. A p potion? Oh, no, this isn't a cookbook, he realized with horror. It's a spell book. What have I done? This is not good at all. It's a cooking catastrophe and I need to fix it now. So he searched and searched through the pages of the old spell book before deciding on a potion called Undo Soup. Five cat hairs, four meaty bones, three sunny morning dewdrops, two stinky old slippers, one pinch of magic witching dust, directions, throw it all in, stir, and leave for two minutes. Hopefully this will undo this terrible mess, he said. Then he set to work on making the new potion. And this time he was sure to follow the recipe to the very letter. Well, almost. He could only find one stinky old slipper, so he threw in some extra cat hairs instead. Ha! This seems easy enough. He was just thinking when suddenly... Poof! It was ready. The mixture was blue and bubbling. This time he resisted adding seasoning before serving some up for the frog. And... Zap! The frog changed into a dog. Woof, woof, said the dog. Oh, no, not again, said the cat. I really need to put this right. So he hurried back to the book to find the answer. Ah, this looks ideal, he said, reading aloud a recipe for... Make a witch stew. Five glittery fish scales, four spindly spider legs, three tablespoons of frog spit two sun-ripened pumpkins, one pinch of magic witching dust, directions, throw it all in, stir, and leave for three minutes. Ha! 
Hopefully this will make a witch this time, said the cat, as he followed the instructions super, super carefully. Well, kind of. There was no frog spit, so he used a smidge of dog drool instead. The cat waited patiently for a moment, then, poof, it was ready. The mixture was oddly orange. Once again, he avoided seasoning before dishing some up for the dog, and... Zap! The dog magically transformed into a very unhappy witch. Ribbit, ribbit, woof, woof, said the witch crossly. Oh dear, said the cat, I guess I did need the frog spit after all. Thankfully, the potions eventually wore off and the lovely witch returned to her normal self. But the cat was never allowed to make lunch ever again. Ha, huh. she didn't mention magic, though, he said quietly, as he picked another interesting book and started planning his next magical adventure. And what's the name of this book? Magic for Cats. And that's the end of the story. See, not a scary story at all. The cat got into some trouble, but he really didn't learn his lesson because at the end, he seems to be thinking about getting into more trouble by reading a book called Magic for Cats. I think the moral of this story is don't teach your cat how to read because they don't seem to have good judgment. Always remember that Grandpa loves you, even if you turn me into a frog or a dog, though I prefer to be a dog if I had a choice, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.